Okay. Now to the next, uh, now to the next, uh, files here now. I turn the page here now. Oh goodness, I'm losing my glasses. My reading glasses. If, uh, hold on a moment here. I fix this, this Lord Jumpins. Whoa, I almost lost my, uh. Alright. Ah, oh, goodness gracious, man. Alright. Ah! My dotty girl. Yeah. Alright. Here we go now. So, uh. So this next case, uh. This is the first, uh. This is the first story where, uh. Where some, where somewhat somebody gets the death penalty, and um, and I think uh, I think you probably know this story too, you know, because I relived this a lot of my times, you know. This buddy from Toronto, he he actually works in the music industry. He was about to go to Ireland to perform there for uh. For Dolores O'Riordan's memorial songs, whatever you calls it, and everything, right? And all of a sudden, something happened with the plane, and and it crashed and down and landed, and he had no idea what he was getting himself into, you know. He finds a note right next to a uh, to a drinking machine, and um. And it it said, without even, because, you know, they wouldn't even put their names on that paper, though. But I was so stupid to, like, even, uh, even have the thought of putting a message saying that, uh, this kindergarten boy was killed and everything. And it was killed by zombies. Well, we already know that they were dumbed all over the place. And he found zombie goo all over the place. And pretty much send, send them down there and, uh, and to clean it all up. <laughs> Engine lard dying's man. I'm telling you. So he calls, he calls Officer Tanner and tells him all about it after he's seen the note there. And, and we expected, uh, we expected zombies to be down there. And pretty much, uh, and we expected the dead boy's body too. You know, is what I mean. And everything. Oh yeah. Absolutely. You know, uh, we spent forever, a week, trying to figure that case out. My goodness gracious. And this, uh, and this new Finese news reporter. That is the first time... He came in into our lives. And you pretty much know his name, I must say. Oh yeah, my dotty girl. Ross Tilly. Yeah. Oh yeah, he was all over my case about, you know, how I promised him evidence and stuff. And so, uh, so he could put it on the NTV Evening News Hour. Oh, yeah. My goodness gracious. I mean, we were not associated with, uh, with that news, uh, with that news show and the news anchors. And, and who else works there? Uh, especially Eddie Shear. Yeah, but anyways, um. So, we've, uh. So we pretty much went down there and and we found evidence that um we found evidence that a 16 year old boy and I'd say he was the youngest ever put on death row you know oh yeah oh baby believe me like like talk about making history that's for sure we found out that he was the one behind it all and uh and not only did not only did he kill him, he he pretty much uh, stole away on the bus and um 
and went to Japan and stole a bunch of dead bodies in in a Japanese cemetery. And then he got them all on the plane and dumped them all over the Eden. Oh yes, my daddy girl, he certainly did. Yep. Uh, so, so we go and, um, that week was all over with. We go and chase him and everything. We finally catches him. He, he, he flees from us. We runs to try to catch him and everything, chasing him circles. And, uh, and after that we caught him. We send, we send him off to jail, told him he was arrested. And, um... And he was waiting another, he was waiting another week to hear his trial and everything. And there was no hesitation that the judge was going to put him on death row. Yeah. Okay, next case now. The case where a bunch of kids took over the whole, the whole town, city. Whatever you pretty much, uh, pretty, now this is one of the most interesting cases I've ever had, you know, and still Ross Tilly was still around. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, first, uh, first off they hides, uh, they pretty much hides, like in the shelter that was, uh, pretty much. Uh, yeah, pretty much in the woods and everything. Well, well, that whole place was exile and everything. And, uh, and when the kids found out we were looking for them, they, they went somewhere else. They did. And then, um, and then when we figured out where they were hiding to, our whole SWAT team, no, not the SWAT team. Uh, me, Tanner, Nicole, and Robin, we pretty much, we pretty much head, uh, head to the place where they were hiding to and everything, and I showed Tanner the most wanted list, and, uh, the, he was like, oh, they're not bad looking criminals at all, and I was like, Tanner, mm -mm 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 -mm. yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. God, I need to fix this, my glasses. They're falling right off me. Or I should just glue them on. Yeah. But anyways, uh... Anyways, when we when we caught these kids and everything, and brought them and pretty much brought them to court, uh, they were um, I think the judge sentenced him. I mean, all of them, forty five years in prison. It's my guess. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, and, nah. Here's another one that's gonna surprise you the most. The police forces were looking for Owen Jackson after a plane crash at the St. John's Airport, and everything. This uh, this buddy who has asthma, he was looking for his sister Jamie. Uh, it looked like she was kidnapped and stuff, and. I'm telling you, uh, and out of nowhere, he wanted justice on his own terms. Don't you believe that? He didn't. He didn't want mm, that buddy off to jail after he kidnapped his sister. In, instead, instead, mm, um, instead, the judge and warden Elizabeth, uh, caught mm, Kristen. The name of the guy, um, he pretty much, he pretty much took an axe 
and pretty much chopped and opened the coffin that he, like, stole, and he just pretty much found it somewhere. Ooh. Oh, yeah. And the next thing you know, he gets out gasoline. Like, literally gasoline. Yep. And you know what happens next? He pours the gasoline all over the coffin and never even realized that, you know, the judge and Warden Elizabeth pretty much smelled the gasoline, all right. And then he strikes a match and sets the coffin on fire while Owen Jackson was still in that coffin. And, uh, and Kristen pretty much roasted him alive. Oh, yeah. My goodness gracious, man. Me, my son, I'm gonna tell you. Me, our soul came right up to my throat. Oh. <laughs> like, uh, like talk about, you know, someone pretty much, uh, someone pretty much doing that kind of shit. <laughs> 